So I'm building a base for my workbench, and there'll be a full build video for that, but I thought along the way it might be a good idea to make some technique videos. So here I've squared up all my material and laid it out uh, in its correct orientation, and I'm marking the locations for the legs onto the foot. I've got the legs spread to their correct width, which is the width of the bench, and the feet overhanging by the same amount on each side. It's, uh, I think, right about two inches. Now on the bottom of each leg, I'm going to mark the length of the tenon, which is to say where the shoulder lines will lie. I'm just making a quick mark uh, to use as a reference in a minute when I cut that in with a knife. While I have the pieces laying out the way they're, they're going to be situated. I'm going to mark what each piece is and what its correct orientation is. That way we don't get confused later on when we move them about after cutting and trimming and things getting shuffled around. So with that done, I've got the mortise and gauge that I set up earlier um, to mark in the, in the correct place. It's got two pins in it. I cut the ends of the feet. I've cut the uh, cut lines for the tenon cheeks in there. And now I'm based off of that reference line going to knife in a line for the shoulders of the tenons. And I'll square that all the way around. Now, the whole time I'll be reference or registering rather my square on the same reference face or reference edge of each leg. This will make sure that everything meets up and, and all the uh, joinery fits together the way it should. So now that I've got the shoulder lines, I'm going to take my mortise and gauge again and mark the lines up the sides of the leg so I can cut off the cheeks. So with that done, now I'm going to do a little marking for the mortise holes. I've got the leg positions marked out and I'm going to measure in a half an inch from each of the uh, edge markers for the leg and that'll mark the uh, two ends of, of the mortise hole. So now with those marked out I can go back to my mortise and gauge which is still set up in the same position and registering it on the reference face, I can cut the marks for, for the mortises in the, in the feet here. I'll use that same marking gauge to mark the other leg and the other mortise and virtually everything else. That'll stay the same throughout the project. And even if it's not exactly centered, it is, but if it wasn't, Everything will still match up just fine as long as I always register that faceplate of that gauge against the reference faces of the various parts. So now I'm just going to add knife lines to the start and, and end of, of each mortise. So I'll have a place to lay my chisel into when it comes time to finalize the, the uh, edges of the mortise. I made a little mistake there, if you can see I've registered the square on the wrong face. But it worked out because all the pieces are square anyway, so it wasn't a problem. But it's really good to get into the habit of doing, doing it correctly. So now I'm deepening the uh, knife lines that mark the uh, edges of the tenons, and I'm notching out the corners. Uh, the idea is to give my saw a place to register. Uh, so I'm starting the cut in one notch and slowly laying the saw down across the top, following the knife line until it registers into the other notch as well. And once it does that, I just drop my hand and cut all the way to the bottom to the shoulder line and same thing on the other side. Now I can pull the workpiece out and turn it around and then I can finish the cheek cuts, or at least the vertical cheek cuts. Um, I just drop the saw into the kerf and cut.
cut straight to the down to the shoulder line on both sides. Now I should have marked and cut the shoulders as well at this point, but I was uh, kind of thinking a little too far ahead and went straight to cutting the uh, the cheeks. So I'm deepening the knife line here uh, that marks out the cheek and, and shoulder lines. And then I'm going to turn my knife sideways and turn that knife line into a little groove that I can rest my saw in. So that I can just register my saw in that groove and I know I'll be cutting square straight across the piece. And I can just cut down and take the cheek off with a, uh, with a tenon saw. You could also do this if you wanted to with a chisel, just tapping in from about an eighth of an inch onto the waist side into the knife line and that would work just as well. That's just how I choose to do it because I think for me at least it's a little faster. So we'll get the saw settled into the line and registering in the groove. And once we've got the cut started, it's nice and easy to keep it straight and cut straight down. Now, in this particular case, I didn't cut quite far enough down when I was making the cut from the top, so I'll take a couple of strokes to square that off. I really shouldn't do it this way, um, but I didn't want to put it back in the vise to take, you know, just a few strokes with the saw. So there goes that one. Now we flip it over. And I've done the same thing. I've deepened the knife line and created a groove and registered the saw in the groove. And then I just cut down like I did before. Only on this side, my uh, first cut was good enough and it just pops right off. So about now I'm realizing I forgot to mark out for the uh, shoulders. So I'm doing that now, I'm marking a half an inch in. And then we're gonna pop the piece back into the vise and cut those down. Um, I should have used a knife line here. I should always use a knife line. It, it's just more precise. But I did. I just marked it with pencil because it was a little awkward the way I was trying to do it. Um, so what I've done here is I've pinched the tenon between my thumb and forefinger uh, right at the line and I'm using that as a fence to let my saw ride on to get started. And then I'm just going to cut down right alongside the line on the waist side. So I'm going to leave the line and cut down on the outside. I see my bench wobbling a bit. I can see why I need to get the legs finished and <laughs> get it stabilized. So we cut to the bottom and once again, I should really take it in this case out of the vise to make this cut flat on the bench. But being impatient, I just cut it where it was. There we go. So now we have a tenon. I drifted just a little bit away from the line, uh, fortunately into the waist side, so that wasn't a problem. But I'm just gonna clean that up with a chisel. I'll leave the whole line and even then a little bit more because um, better to leave it fat at least to start with and then when we go to fit it if we're having trouble we can always take off a little more that's easy enough to do it's much harder to put some back on so we'll just trim off just enough to make it straight and then once we've got that done we'll do the same going around the shoulders just trimming off any uh, any high spots and, and making sure it's all flat and straight. So with that done, we can start on the mortise. So I'm using a bit and brace to remove the bulk of the waist. Um, that works just fine. You could also use a drill press or even a hand drill with a Forstner bit. That would be fine too. Or um, you could go do it the... Uh, quote unquote right way, the uh, traditional way, and use a regular chisel or a morning sink chisel to, to remove all that material. Um, I think it's a little faster, at least for me this way. 
So what I do is I drill out most of the waste with my bracing bit and then I can just taking very small bites with the chisel, just a little thin piece at a time, work my way back towards the line. And I won't actually put my chisel in the knife line until I've got everything squared up and all but a tiny sliver of the waste removed. And the same way I left the tenons a little fat, I'll leave these mortise holes maybe just a tiny bit tight uh, for the same reason. I've, I can always remove a little material and loosen it up, uh, but it's very difficult to put some back on. So here I'm just paring down the sides, and getting everything nice and square and straight. So one thing that helps a lot is to uh, bevel the bottom edge of your tenons. It's going to be buried inside the mortise. No one's ever going to see it, but it'll help it ride past any uh, little fibers sticking out or irregularities in your mortise walls, and it'll help it. It'll just help it get started a little easier. And there's not a thing wrong with easy. So we'll give it an initial test fit here. We're just giving it a little hand pressure. And it's going about a third of the way in. And it doesn't seem to want to go any further. So we'll trim a little bit off. Just a little bit at a time. Um, like a bunch of people before me have, have said, we want to just kind of sneak up on the fit. So we'll just take a little bit off of that tenon and it looked like it was wanting to twist just a bit. So I'm going to take most of what I remove from that back right hand side. All right. And with that done, we can try it again. So we put it in there and give it just hand pressure and that's much better most of the way down right off and then a couple of taps with the mallet and it's nice and straight and square there you go uh, and if you want to see this done by people with much more experience and skill than me the people that i learned from i uh, go check out paul sellers uh, i'll leave links to, to a video from him below or he, james wright or shannon rogers all of them would be great uh, great resources for this sort of thing so if that was helpful at all, go ahead and hit the uh, like button. And if you want to know when I'm going to release more content, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Um, thanks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.